Child care teachers and family child care providers know that one of the best ways to reduce the spread of germs and prevent illness in their programs is to use good hand washing and sanitation practices. This video will provide information on proper techniques for hand washing and basic health considerations in child care settings. In addition, we will show strategies used in many classrooms to ensure that children have a positive experience during routines. Please note that this video deals with considerations during the quality assessment process, and in North Carolina, the Division of Environmental Health and Division of Child Development also have requirements regarding sanitation for child care programs, so it is important to be familiar with all requirements across the various agencies. Good sanitation and hand washing is important, and the goal is to complete routines effectively and efficiently. It may seem that the standards related to health practices are unrealistic or impossible to obtain. However, over the years, many programs have been observed where hand washing practices and other sanitation requirements have been successfully built into a healthy and developmentally appropriate childcare environment. For these programs, the health related routines seem to occur in a natural and easy manner. At the same time, we must recognize that they spent much time planning for the implementation of good health practices. In this video, we will illustrate the basic requirements for sanitation, as well as how programs have been successful in implementing an effective hand washing process. Proper hand washing includes wetting the hands with running water, washing all surfaces of the hands with soap for the required amount of time, rinsing well, drying hands with a single-use paper towel or other hand-drying device, and turning off the faucet with a paper towel or other method without contaminating hands. Although very high standards for positive health practices are necessary, complete perfection is not expected in order to maintain a healthy environment for group care, so a few lapses are allowed. Thank you for throwing that away. To maintain a healthy environment, child care providers should ensure that children complete hand washing upon arrival to the classroom or re-entry after outdoor play, after messy types of play and before and after water play, after contact with contaminated objects or animals, and after contact with bodily fluids, Fatima has her coat off. She's going to wash her hands. Washing hands when entering the classroom helps ensure that germs from outside the classroom environment are washed away prior to touching materials or furnishings in the classroom. During center time, this classroom provides many different play options for children such as paint, play-doh, glue, and indoor sand activities. Many of these materials are moist and obviously messy. Germs can grow easily here, so hand washing is required. Even dry materials like sand and chalk can be dusty or powdery. Hand washing after use, before other materials are handled, keeps classroom materials clean. Hand washing is also needed after touching surfaces such as mouthed objects or toys, upon contact with a trash can or trash can lid, after wiping up spills, or when teachers use cleaning products. Well, what do you do when you're tired? <coughs> Get your tissue, there you go. Well, let's see. Children and adults should wash their hands after any contact with bodily fluids such as saliva, mucus, or blood. This hand washing is critical, especially because children can be contagious without any symptoms of illness. Okay. Though a few programs have conveniently installed sinks and bathrooms on their playgrounds, most programs do not have access to these facilities in their outdoor play environment. Physical activity and exposure to the natural world is very important. Therefore, in North Carolina, some types of hand washing can be delayed when children are engaged in outdoor play activities. Oh, good blowing. You really did need to blow that nose. Really blow it again. Let's go over and throw it away together. There you go. I'm sorry you're not feeling so well. The use of hand sanitizing products, 
disposable wipes, or wet paper towels does not replace hand washing. However, programs are permitted to use these products while outdoors if all children's hands are washed upon returning indoors. Any time a waterless wash is used with children, it is essential to keep the container out of children's reach and to carefully supervise the children as they use the substance. However, if children will be eating outside or there is contact with blood, then typical hand washing routines using soap and running water should occur even when the children are playing outdoors. All children and adults need to wash their hands before eating. Nice Teachers warm. should wash their hands prior to food preparation and also bottle feeding. Additionally, children and teachers need to wash their hands after they eat. This infant had his hands washed before holding his own bottle. This is required for children who hold their bottles even when they are held by the caregiver. There are many options for creating systems to promote sanitary routines in the classroom while managing problems of contamination. This class allows many opportunities for children to play freely. As children become hungry for snack, one teacher prepares food for individual children while the others continue playing. This limits the chances for children to start playing with one another or leaving the table to touch materials before eating. Having access to a floater to assist with transition times can be very helpful, especially with younger children who may not understand the importance of hand washing prior to coming to the table. All right, go wash your hands. Which one is the next biggest, Malachi? In this public school pre-K, the children engage in a group game activity with the lead teacher while the assistant sanitizes the table and has a few helpers set up for lunch. Nancy sends small groups of children to wash hands with Maria, and then children are immediately seated to eat. Which one is the next biggest? All right, go wash your hands. This reduces wait times before eating. And then all of the children are seated for lunch with both teachers. While hand washing may be the single most important measure to stop the spread of germs, surface sanitation plays a crucial role in maintaining the cleanliness of the childcare environment and preventing viruses, bacteria, and other microbes from spreading among furnishings, children, and adults. In preparation for eating and when meals and snacks are over, the table surfaces must be cleaned and sanitized. To do this properly, the table should first be cleaned. Remove any food crumbs and then clean the table with detergent. Most programs apply a solution of soap and water for this step and then rinse it, always using a single-use cloth or paper towel when wiping the table. Next, the table is sprayed with a sanitizer that is approved for safe use in the childcare setting. Many programs use a bleach solution diluted with water as specified by state sanitation rules or use another approved sanitizing product as an alternate to the bleach solution. The surface must be sprayed and left glistening wet with the bleach solution. It must then be allowed to air dry or be wiped dry only after a minimum contact time of two minutes. Watch how these classrooms reduce exposure to potentially contaminated surfaces. This infant classroom has containers on hand to separate mouth toys. Drink it up. That's good pretending. While facilitating dramatic play with this toddler, Marissa models how to pretend to use the cup without touching it to her mouth. The toddler is learning to do this, but still mouths the cup. When he is finished playing and moves on to another activity, the teacher removes the toy for sanitation before another child picks it up. Hand washing after diapering and toileting routines is vital in reducing the spread of germs associated with gastrointestinal illness. These germs can make children and adults very sick, but for the youngest, these illnesses can be severe. Teachers also need to wash their hands as the last step of the diaper change process. This should occur before they touch any other classroom surfaces, such as cabinet doors, materials in the classroom, or when they hand a toy to a child after returning them to play activities. Children who are potty training or who complete toileting routines independently must wash their hands. Teachers must wash hands after assisting children, whether they are changing pull-ups or diapers for children involved in potty training or simply helping a child with their zipper or button. 
Maria helps this older preschooler button her skirt and then washes her hands before assisting other children. This young infant enrolled in a family child care home has head control, so after this diaper change, the caregiver can wash hands in the sink. All right, you ready in for contrast, the water? this seven week old infant does not yet have head control. He cannot hold his head steady without additional support from the teacher while being held upright, so the teacher wipes his hands with a disposable wipe after completing his diaper change. This method is adequate until he has head control like the older baby. This toddler program designed a sink with several faucets to reduce wait times during hand washing. As children return to the classroom after outdoor play, several children wash hands at the same time and then quickly resume play inside. To reduce contamination of clean hands, this program uses a trash can with a step pedal that is easy for teachers and children to operate. Another solution to reduce contamination of hands is to remove the trash can lid before group hand washing routines occur. Can you go put it in the trash can with me? Yeah, right here. Thank you so much. Other strategies to help children learn about good health practices include visual cues. This hand washing chart was created by the children in the classroom at the beginning of the school year. The teacher uses it to help children remember the steps involved. Maria uses verbal reminders to ensure this child follows all of the steps. Making sure there is a strong understanding of the times when hand washing is necessary is important because sometimes children are required to wash their hands more than is actually necessary. Unnecessary hand washings can add up over the course of the day and result in extra transitions for children taking time away from play and learning activities. For example, it is not required for children to wash hands before they use Play-Doh or sand or when they move from one activity area to another within the classroom. Teaching children to sneeze or cough into the elbow reduces the spread of germs and does not require hand washing afterwards. So remember, if you have to sneeze when we're inside, it's okay to catch your sneeze in your wet. How can we catch it? Oh, in our elbows! Achoo! Here, let's put your little, let's put that one right on your little. Here's that. All right, Jason, you need to remember it. Thinking about the why behind the various requirements is helpful, and if in doubt, there are many agencies in North Carolina that can offer assistance and answer questions. There, that's called working together. Good sanitation practices and proper hand washing contribute significantly to children's and teachers' overall health, thus supporting a quality learning environment.